you'll never die. God is light. Come on, somebody. And in him is no darkness at all. But he said we would be changed. <coughs> For this corruptible will put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. In other words, we're going to live with him forever and ever and ever. So where are we, you think, in time? Where do, where do most people believe that we are? Why do, why do you think that Christians argue over the rapture? And they they want to debate over the time that we live in. It's simple, man. The rapture cannot be measured by increments of time. You can't measure the rapture by any event at all. You can't measure this catching away that I've just spoken of in type here in the 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You can't, you can't measure it against something because... The rapture is imminent. It, it's imminency. It's based on imminency. It's not based on any set time. It's based on the fact that God will remove us before he deals with Israel and before the Antichrist arises to remove us to heaven. He'll catch us up. Come on, somebody. Forever and ever and ever and ever to be in with him. Now, I want to talk about what I believe. I want to talk about America for just a minute. Some of y'all have heard of some of this the other night, but some of you haven't. There's a lot of people, I mean, man, people that know the Bible, people that know the Word, people that, 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 that seek God. There's a lot of people. You see them on YouTube. You can go on YouTube. You can hear what they have to say. Listen to me. You can, you can go to the bookstores and you can read their books. But I'm going to go by what the Bible tells me. And the first thing that the Bible tells me is that the restrainer, the restrainer has to be lifted. Or in other words, the restrainer has to be gone before this thing. If we weren't here, you think it's bad now. If you and I weren't here, John, if we weren't here, it, it, even, as, it, even as you think, well, who am I? We're the servants of God. We, we are the church. And if we weren't here today, right now, you ain't seen nothing of what it's going to be like. But you take, you take us out of the equation. And what I mean by that, Jesus, the Spirit of God, however you want to say it, you take him out of the equation, you, you remove him, and lift this restrainer, it, that's when it's all going to begin. That's what the Scripture says. It says he, it won't happen. He said it can't take place until he is removed Come on, somebody, out of the way. But people have asked me what they think will happen in America. And so, here's what I believe. And this is what I've prayed for years. I've talked to God about this for years, about our nation. I know a lot of people, some of you, you want to say it to me, maybe personally, maybe not to anybody, but deep inside, you wonder what's really going to happen to us. We've heard everything. Well, there's, let's... Let's look at three different scenarios. Number one, and, I, and this is what I pray will not happen before the Lord comes, and I really don't think it will before He comes. <coughs> but number one, America could be, could be attacked nuclear. We could be attacked. Number two, there could be a, a natural disaster. There could be something hit our nation that would rip our nation apart. It, you know, with, just like the other day in Nepal, that earthquake, that was a terrible earthquake. But there could be an earthquake like, uh, like no one has ever seen. I've heard a, a lot of Bible prophecy teachers talk about that. But I pray every day that that won't happen. I'll tell you what I pray. I say, well, God, I'm going to stand in your face regardless. And I'm going to pray because there's God-fearing people that live in Greenback. There's God-fearing people that live all over this place. And God, if he'll save Abraham, then I believe he'll save us. Amen. That's what I believe. Amen. That's what I'm praying. The other thing that we've heard a lot about and you've heard a lot about and I want to go back and clarify is about an economic collapse. How many of you have read all the books and heard all this stuff? Well, four years ago I stood in this pulpit. Some of you all were here and some of you weren't. And I told you, and I know what the Lord told me, and I told you that, that this wasn't going to collapse. I told you that the dollar, the gas prices would go down. Anybody remember me telling you all this? I told you that the gas prices would go back down. He said, well, how did you know that, preacher? Because the Bible told me it would. He said, where does it say that? He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. So here's my point. 
<coughs> when you see this so-called rapture index real, real high, don't look for the Lord to come. But when you see it like it is now beginning to decline and everybody begins to go back into what they were doing and get away from God and everything is good and the refrigerator is full, and we forget God, and we begin to back up. Can I preach a little bit now? And we begin to forget the one that brought us. We begin to forget the one that we praise, and the one that we should worship, that we should adore above. And when everybody gets kind of loose and kind of lax, and then all of a sudden the bridegroom comes, and ten of them rise up, but only five of them are ready. Come on, somebody. That's where we are. And Jesus is one in the world. He's telling the church that right now, that he's going to come. One of the other things that, that we see, and I want to go and I want to talk on it just a little, is in the Old Covenant there was a man named Nimrod. And I talked a little bit about it the other night. Now Nimrod, his name meant hunter. He was a mighty hunter, the Bible said, in the earth. And Nimrod was a type of antichrist. Let me tell you what he told the people. Right after the flood of Noah, Nimrod came on the scene. And, and Nimrod... As the people, he brought them under subjection by his lies. And I, I don't know if y'all have ever read the book of Josephus or not, but some of this I got from Josephus, and he knew all about the Jewish history. Said that he was a mighty hunter in the earth, and that, and that what he told the people, it's not in the Bible, but what he told the people was is that he was going to have them all come together, and, and they were going to be unified. Let me tell you something. They were a unified group of people. And I want to tell you right now, when the church gets unified, like the world and the sinners get unified, then we'll really have something. But they were unified. And, and Jesus said, they're so unified now, if I don't scatter them, they're going to be like us. So I'm going to have to do something. So he came down. Well, here's what Nimrod told him. Nimrod told him, he said, we're going to build a tower so high. We're going to build it all the way to heaven. He said that God can never kill us again. He hated God, just like the devil does. He was a type. And see, that's the way it is now. Everything is about fear. Everything is about fear in America, fear of this and fear of that. I'm going to build bunkers. I'm going to, I'm going to build underground. I'm going to store up this. I'm going to store up that. But my God tells me to store up my riches in heaven, store up my treasures above. And then when God comes, you don't have to worry about it because you're ready. I'm not living to, for the Antichrist. I'm not living uh, past Revelation chapter 4. Me and my wife were talking today. I just began to really study past Revelation 4 because I just know that I know that I know that that trumpet is going to sound and I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up and you're going to get up and we're going to leave this place and then they can do whatever they want to do. But that's what I'm living my life for. And if there's one thing that I can tell you and I can't make you, I can preach to you, I can pray for you, but I can't make you. Be ready. Amen. I said be ready. Amen. Be ready. Now I'm going to show you something that the Lord showed me, and I want everybody to listen. This, was, this, this is something that I was really hesitant in saying, because I'll probably be criticized about it, but he showed me this. It was like Jesus was sitting in a classroom, and there was dolls all around him. He was sitting in the middle of the classroom, and I don't know how to tell you this, but I believe he was talking to God. And what really, really got my attention <coughs> is the dolls. They were everywhere. And you say, you mean to tell me, preacher, that you saw Jesus with dolls? I did. And I'm going to tell you what it means. He reached down. It just looked like he reached down and got a doll. And I tell you what I believe that he was talking to God about. He was talking to God about how much that he loved humans. But let me tell you something that I noticed. The only ones that Jesus got, the only dolls, now they, they, were, they were everywhere. They, they were back here. They, they were over here. They, they were everywhere around this classroom. But the ones that were the closest to him, the dolls that were the closest to him, were the only dolls that he was getting, were the ones that was closest to him. He could have got the other ones, but he didn't get up. He could have got up, but he didn't. He could have got up, he could, but he didn't. I said he could have got up, but he was showing me something. And that's the way that I want you to see this last day, that I don't want to be far from God. I don't want to be steps away from him. I want to be right where he can grab me. My God, somebody, I want to be right there where he can reach down and get me and pluck me up. I don't want to be way out here from God. Amen. He could have got up and turned around and walked and got him, but he didn't. 
but the ones that were, he was only reaching for the closest ones. That's what. And you know what he was telling God? You know what those, those were human beings. He was telling God how much he loved us, how he had died for us, and how he was coming back for us. You say, how do you know that, preacher? I don't know that because I heard that, but I just know that in my spirit that God was showing me through this that, hey, that he's coming back for those that are the closest to him, the ones that are ready, the ones that have prepared. I'm not talking about people that are far off. I'm not talking about people that are behind you. You say, that scares me, preacher. We ought to because we've got to be ready. Amen. That's why I'm preaching to you. That's why I've been here all these years telling you, you've got to be ready. You've got to make sure your life is lined up with God. You got anything in your life that's not of God and you know it's not of God? Just get, you can get rid of it. It's choice. Just say, I don't want it no more. I'm getting rid of it. Jesus said, this, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit any corruption. In other words, it's not going to be the corruption that's going to enter in. It's not going to be flesh and blood that enters in. It's not going to be anything of this world, but it's going to be something that's other world called God. In our relationship, the only people in the world beside the Jewish remnant that's going to make it, that's going to escape and mow off into, the, into Petra, and the Bible says, and actually in Isaiah 16 verse 4, you can go and read it, Talks about, he said, hide my outcast, bury not them that wandereth. Talking about during that time the Antichrist comes and some of them will escape the armies of the Antichrist. The only other people that's going to escape, I'm looking at you. You're the only people, you are the most blessed people I got on the face of the planet because you belong to Jesus. So what happens today? Somebody, they, you always want to use fear. What happens today if if all of a sudden that you can't go to the supermarket, I just want you to listen to me for a minute, okay? I'm going to obey God whether you all like it or not. What, what, what if somebody today, and, you, and we walked out this door, and all of a sudden we can't go to the store anymore? You can't just go down to Hardee's. My wife don't let me go to Hardee's anyway, by the way. Uh, you, you can't go to Burger King. You know, you can't go down here to the, you know, the chop shop. You know what I'm saying? You know, and all of a sudden you can't do that anymore. What, what are you going to do? You know, you, can't, you just can't go to the grocery store. You can't even get your gas anymore. And then they tell you all of a sudden that unless you do something uh, uh, that they want you to do, you can't even hold a job anymore. What would you do? You better be ready. Amen. You better hear this preacher and you better be ready. Because that day's coming. I had a lady the other night. She told me that she had a dream and I believe her. She came trembling, talking to me. Incredible. She's a prophet. She's a woman of God. And she said that she said that they were at the uh, Knoxville, uh, like the, she could see them at the Knoxville Civic Coliseum. And here's what she told me. I'm telling you, church, I know that some of y'all look at me like, Preacher, you really believe all this? I'm telling you, from the heart of God, Jesus is coming. Amen. She said, you know, she said, she said, I don't know how she, but I knew that the rapture had taken place. And here's what she told them, is that all these bukus of people, this was in Knoxville, we're, we're in these huge buildings up like the Knoxville Coliseum. And they had these machines set up. And she even said that some of them were, were people that were, she said that knew, even after they missed the rapture, they, they knew Jesus. But they were there, and these people were in there and just basically telling them, you've got to get this mark. And what it was, she said, was a digital machine. It had this number on it. And on the last three digits of the machine was 666. And it was a, just like a, almost like a barcode, she said. And she said they had to get some kind of mark either here or up here. But I, here's one thing that I do remember. She said that they were saying to me that they were just pressing me to get this mark and that this is what they need to do and how they would be taken care of and how everything would go their way if they do it. You better be ready. Amen. You won't be able to go uh, down the road. Your life. We'll, 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 people will dime you out. Your life will mean absolutely nothing to people during that time. There won't be any more preachers like me. There won't be any more people like you. We'll all be gone. Won't be anybody to love them anymore. Try to bring them into the kingdom anymore. They, they, they'll, and right after that, now there will be an angel that will descend from heaven, the Bible says, during this hour, and he'll begin to preach the gospel. Then the two witnesses will come. But during this season, after the rapture, after it's all over with, that's when I believe America will fold up. That me and my father-in-law were talking, the infrastructure of America. The Lord said, I'm coming. 
He told me up in my bedroom today, he said, this is where I take my text from. He said, I want you to tell my people that I'm coming. He said, I'm coming in a moment. I'm coming in.